Charles Purcell presents. Hey, how are you? It's um, another uh, episode of uh, Charles Purcell presents with uh, our good friend uh, Chucky Bucky. Hey there, hi there, who there? How's it going, everybody? And Uncle Chuck. Well, hello, Charles Purcell. Hello, Chucky Bucky. Hello, everybody. This is a uh, well. It's not just any other episode. It's a special episode. Well, aren't they all special? I'd like to think they're all special. Yeah, yeah, they're all. They're, they're all special. But today's a, a little special day because Chucky Bucky and Uncle Chuck are here uh, via Zoom. We're not in the same room together. And that in and of itself isn't such a big deal. But, well, you know, I've got Chaz here with me. Cousin Chaz is our uh, New Arts and Media Studios audio engineer, general tech guy. He handles all the tech things. Hey, Chaz. Hey, man, how's it going, dude? Uh, so that's Chaz. He, um, Chaz is also a, uh, an amateur theoretical physicist. That's right, man. So you study theoretical physics. Well, you know, man, like, I do my own research, right? Right. I got my uh, education from the University of Google, dude. Okay. All right. So, but you're into uh, theoretical physics. And what you've done today, uh, you've got us straddling different timelines, different parallel universes. Yeah, man, that's right. So as I understand it, uh, what you told me before we went on air here is that... uh, the three of us, Chucky Bucky, Uncle Chuck, and myself, each of us is in a different timeline, but we're able to share our time-space continuum together. Or I don't know how to say it. That's okay, dude. Well, why don't, why don't you try to explain it? Okay, man, it's really very simple, man. The time-space continuum is always shifting, right? And it's always breaking off into different timelines. At any given moment, like right now, boom, another timeline has just, you know, taken off on this tangent from where we are right now. Okay, and that could have happened just at any moment. It could happen right now. Boom. A timeline uh, cracks, so to speak. Yeah, man. So we're in our timeline right now, you and me, man, right? Okay. So there's an infinite amount of timelines, an infinite amount of parallel universes. And uh, the problem is has been in the past that you can't uh, cross into other timelines well yeah of course the, some people would argue that they don't even exist or no but, uh, no i think most people have accepted that they exist well i suppose so i think there's a lot of people still who are pretty darn skeptical about it and they think it's just a little you know it's a, a trope for a sitcom or something you know yeah or a movie so it's but Chaz, yeah man Chaz, you're telling us it's not just a trope for a sitcom or movie. It's real, and, and it's happening all the time. And Yeah, man, and it's happening right now, because uh, that's why they're, uh, Uncle Chuck and uh, Chucky Bucky, man, they're, why they're on Zoom, man, they're not here right you with us, because, man, each of them is in a different timeline. Oh, okay, right, okay, then that's what we need to explain to the listeners here. So, so Chaz, um, Chucky Bucky is here from, from what timeline? Well, man... Uh, Chucky Bucky's here from before the election, dude, right? Because in Chucky Bucky's timeline, well, I'll let him tell you. Chucky Bucky, man, who's the president of the United States? Oh, gosh, I made him. Sorry to say it, but of course, uh, it's, you know, the orange menace himself. What kind of question is that? Everybody knows who the president is. That's what they ask you when you're crazy. Well, see, that's the thing, man, because uh, the Orange Menace is not the president, man, in this timeline over here with me and uh, Charles Russell, dude. He's not. Well, who's the president then? Don't tell me Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, Joe Biden beat the Orange Menace in 2020. Well, gosh, no, he didn't. The Orange Menace won. See, man, that's was sometime before the election is where you guys broke off from each other, man, into different timelines. Holy gosh. Well, wait a minute, you guys. Have you all lost your minds? This is nutty talk here. President Sanders, President Bernie Sanders is just finishing up his second very successful term here. So I don't know what you guys are talking about. Well, it's the, it's the parallel universe. So apparently, Cousin Chaz, Uncle Chuck, his universe split away from ours uh, sometime before the 2016 election. Yeah, man. Had to be during the primaries, right, man? Because he beat Hillary Clinton, right? Well, gosh. He has to. Of course. He beat Hillary Clinton. Who wouldn't? Oh, mercy. Now there you got something going there. So, Uncle Chuck, in your universe, Bernie Sanders is the president? Well, sure. He's finishing up his second term, like I said. 
We're in an election season right now. Well, so are we. Right, so are we. It's it's We're only like 60 days or something from uh, election. Yeah, that's right. It's the uh, second week of September. Right, here too. Well, yeah, man, what do you think? Parallel universes don't go speed up or slow down, man. They go the same speed. So you guys are all on the same day and time of the year. Oh, okay, I see. I get it, I get it. So we're all together in the same time. It's the exact same minute. Right, right. All right. Well, so Charles Borsell, you think everybody's got the premise yet? Can we move on? Yeah, I, I guess so. I think everybody's got the premise. I just think this is pretty amazing. Well, sure it is. It's oh, gosh darn amazing. So Uncle Chuck, what's going on over there uh, with you? So you're having an election, right? Yeah, so we're having an election and, and uh, Bernie Sanders is the outgoing president and he's as I said, it's been very successful. Everybody's really pretty happy around here. We've had a pretty good time of it the last eight years. Of course, there are always ups and downs and such. But So who's running for president in 2024? Well, the front runner is uh, Barbara Lee. Barbara Lee, I remember that name. Who? Oh, from uh, California, right? A member of Congress? Yes, yes. She was, she was Bernie's, or is, Bernie's vice president. And Barbara Lee, and she's running for president here in 2024. And uh, she's pretty much guaranteed to win. All the polls are saying that there's really not close. Oh, so it's not much <laughs> of a, wow. You know, there's no drama to this election. Wow, I, I wish I could say the same here. There's nothing but drama. Uh, it's crazy here. So who's who's running for president where you are? Well, you guys, <laughs> you guys aren't going to believe this. Uh, in my timeline, Joe Biden won the primaries and and won the 2020 election. So how's he doing now in the race? Is he going to win re-election then? Well, here's the, here's the part, you guys. Uh, brace yourselves. Are you sitting down? Yeah, yep. I'm sitting down in my comfy chair. Uh, well, a couple of months ago, he had a, a debate with um, the Orange Menace, who's running for again oh, of course he is Whoa, oh, gosh almighty he'll, he'll never stop running he'll never stop running until the day he dies yeah that makes sense oh, of course he is so anyway the um they had a debate and it went so poorly for joe biden that he wound up dropping out he did oh no way really so that doesn't happen he dropped out he did holy gosh that almighty. poorly in the debate yeah he was just you know he showed how old he was and how addled he was and so so um so the orange menace really beat him huh no i wouldn't say that the orange menace was almost worse in many ways he lied like 162 times. <laughs> well, that's what he does, all right. Sure. No surprise there. So anyway, yeah. Um, and so Kamala Harris, the senator from California, how, how'd she wind up? She was uh, his vice president. Oh, so that makes sense. Wow. So it's Kamala Harris versus the Orange Menace. He's still... Yeah. And it's close? Yeah. They haven't got him figured out by now, huh? No. Okay, so guys, ready? Now, now it's your guys' turn to sit down because... Here's the deal. In my timeline, uh, it's also election time, and Trump is uh, running for president again as an incumbent. Well, because he beat Biden in your timeline. That's right. He was reelected in 2020. But I don't understand, Chucky Bucky. This would be his third term. Oh, yeah, they got rid of that. Which I forget which amendment it is, but they got rid of that. You can serve as long as you want now. Oh, goodness. So for you, it's uh, you're just living in basically in... Uh, as he promised in, in Viktor Orban's uh, Hungary or, or in Putin's Russia. That's that's a darn shame. How's it going for you there, Chucky Bucky? Well, I got to tell you, I, I mean, I can just run down all the issues. There, uh, there was, there's been a national abortion ban. It's just we live basically in a police state now. And uh, the police and the military, they just shoot protesters. Well, are, do people still go out and protest? Oh, sure. There's still lots of protests. There's still lots of us. Most of us are just absolutely appalled at what's happening. Most of us can't stand them. We hate them. And so, sure, there are lots of protests, but uh, not quite as many because people are afraid. Because, like I say, they just shoot them. And, and uh, that we live in a police state now, and the whole Justice Department is completely, you know, at the uh, beck and call of the Orange Menace and his buddies. Oh, my goodness, that's terrible. Yeah, I feel sorry for you. I wish I could take you by the scruff of the neck and just bring you into my timeline, but uh, uh, I don't know, could we do that? Cousin Chaz, could we do that? No, man, you'd, you'd crack up the whole universe, man. If you tried to do that, it would all explode and have like a second Big Bang, man. You can't rip through the time-space continuum, man. It'd be that's, that's bad stuff, man. Okay, well, I guess we better not do that. I guess that's, that's not an option. So, uh, so uh, what's there going on with you there, Charles Purcell? Well, it's a it's it's a really strange election season. Like I said, uh, Kamala Harris 
of course, uh, you know, I'm a social anarchist, so I, I disagree with her policies generally, but she's a, a very good person, a very competent person. And of course, um, as I said just on the podcast this week on my The Log podcast, she's the only thing standing between us and the fascism of the Orange Menace. So I'm 100% with her. And So you think she's going to win? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm very hopeful. It's very close. Um, so Uncle Chuck, in your timeline, now we separated uh, during this, the 2016 primaries. Uh, in your timeline, Bernie wins the primaries and Bernie wins the presidency over uh, Trump. Well, yes, that's right. So here's what's going on where, where I am in my timeline. It's uh, I, like I say uh, before, I wish I could just bring you over because we're having a pretty good gush darn time over here. The uh, the whole uh, Overton window, you know what the Overton window is? That's the thing that it's the idea that it's kind of this window of general acceptability. Like the, like the public says, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Right, the Overton window. Okay, so we got that. So the Overton window has shifted very dramatically now to the left. And I would say it's, it's uh, and you guys, I think, would agree that it's course corrected. It had shifted ever since Reagan so far to the right. It was so skewed so far to the right that things had just gone crazy. And, uh, well, we can see what happens there in Chucky Bucky's. Well, even in your timeline, too, there, Charles. Russell. But, yeah, the Overton window is left. And, uh, and it's due mainly to because of the presidency of uh bernie sanders and uh, you know his people love him the reason he beat the orange menace quite soundly it was it was it wasn't at all close in 2016 because uh the orange menace wanted to sort of you know blow things up and was anti-establishment and people like that well <laughs> the problem with anybody other than bernie and it got down at the end, of course, to Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. And God forbid if Hillary Clinton had, had won the nomination, she was very much representative of the establishment. She wasn't going to make big changes. She wasn't going to blow things up. She wasn't going to be any kind of a revolutionary or a agitator or, you know, she was, she was very much an establishment figure. And that's why she, she would have lost. And that's exactly why she did lose. Right. In our timelines, she, she got beat like a horse. So, right. So in my timeline, many of the Trump voters or might've been Trump voters, they didn't necessarily like him. They just wanted to change. They wanted someone who's really going to shake up the system. And Bernie Sanders was able to do that in a way that wasn't all mean and fascistic and you know but so now right so by now it's been eight years of bernie president bernie sanders so what's the deal now well as you might guess we've got uh, universal health care we got medicare for all all the things he was promising we got uh, student debt forgiveness we've got free uh pre-k through uh the first six years of college we're down to a four-day work week and all of these things just seem so normal to us now. The minute they happen, like, well, of course, how, how have we not had this before? It just feels so natural. Um, the, the biggest issue, of course, with Bernie Sanders was the income and wealth inequality. And that's all gone now uh, just due to uh, tax fairness and the uh, progressive taxing and taxing of capital gains. And the, wow, that's, that's really something. So what about the Republicans and the Orange Menace and all those? What are they doing about it? Are they challenging you here in this election? Well, no, like I say, Barbara Lee is the, uh, the Bernie's VP and, and she's going to be the next president. There's really no doubt about it. The polls have her up at, I don't know, 63, 5% or 67, 70% in some polls, depending on what you look at. So who's running against her? Well, it's uh, right now, you still got the Orange Menace because he, he, he never stops running. It's his part of his grift. So he ran in uh, 2016. He ran in 2020. He's running, running again in 2024. I'm sure he'll run again in 2028. It's just what he does. But now his MAGA party is just this little tiny fringe. If you picture sort of the, the bell curve, right? He's just a very tiny little, the MAGA party has dwindled into this, you know, ridiculous little notion over on the far end of the bell curve. So, but they're still around. Oh, yeah, they're still around, but uh, they don't have any kind of power at all. I mean, they still have free speech. They still have the right to assemble, so they take advantage of that. And, and they spew their hate and bile and prejudice and misogyny, and it gets, gets worse all the time. Yeah, it gets worse all the time here, too, but he's still tied for well, that's just in tough. the polls. So sorry for you. So who else did you see um, is uh, running? Oh, right. So the MAGA party and the, and the uh, traditional Republicans have kind of split off. It's still all in flux here. They're trying to figure things out over there on that side of the spectrum. So Liz, Liz Cheney is uh, running as the Republican candidate. 
Uh, the Orange Menace is running as the uh, MAGA candidate. And then we got the Green and Socialist candidates and uh, a Social Anarchist Party, which is actually really gaining some momentum. So the Greens and the Socialists and all, all these parties, they have some, they got something going. Yes, because of the, the shift of the Overton window, like I was explaining, that's where the real political uh, debate is these days. It's between the Democrats and the uh, Greens and Socialists. So Barbara Lee is still, she's Bernie's VP, so she's still a Democrat? Well, yes, that's the name. They kept the name, but they're, they're nothing like the Democrats you guys remember. They're, they're basically social Democrats now in the, in the style of, of Bernie, right? They're like the sewer socialist Charles Purcell that you love so much from the history of Milwaukee. Okay, so, so they're still, they're not trying to overthrow capitalism. They're just doing everything they can to regulate and redistribute wealth and and be fair and uh, right, right. And they're doing a dang good job of it. So much so as to make the, anything to their right sort of uh, irrelevant, politically speaking. They, they don't have any legs to stand on anymore. The, the people are not not with them. So then there's still debates and questions and how, you know, people still have political disagreements about how to run things. And, oh, my goodness, yes, it's very lively. It's very lively here in my timeline. The, the Greens and the Socialists, well, especially the socialists, because they are actual socialists, unlike Bernie. They they want uh, public ownership of the means of production, and you know, they're old-fashioned socialists. And they're, so they're fighting for that sort of thing. The uh, social anarchists, as I say, they're getting some real play in the, the whole uh, uh, abolition, the whole, uh, the, the people who want to abolish things. Right. Okay. So, well, like me, uh, uh, borders, money, police. Right, right. Abolitionists. Uh, yeah, the abolitionists, uh, the social anarchists, are getting a lot of attention and a lot of sympathy and a lot of agreement with many of uh, the folks. So that's where the really interesting political debates are happening is between the left and the uh, Democrats, the Bernie Sanders, Barbara Lee uh, social Democrats, who are now sort of dead center of the political spectrum, maybe even just a tick to the right of the overall spectrum. And, and you see that uh, all the folks on the left are the ones getting the, a lot of attention. Right, a lot of really good attention. And the, the main thing they're fighting for is uh, election reform because uh, there's been, over the eight years, a great deal of success at the state levels and county and city levels, any jurisdiction that runs their own elections. There's been a huge uptick of ranked choice voting and uh, a proportional representation. And that has been happening more and more and more to the point now where it's going to be uh, the majority. The uh, requisite number of states have agreed to the Electoral College Compact or whatever they call it. So the Electoral College is basically not a thing anymore because the states have it in their power. Oh, right. You know, we, we've talked about this a lot. The states can get around the Electoral College just by deciding to award their electors based on popular vote rather than winner take all. Like Nebraska and Maine always did, right? Right. And now pretty much most of the states do that. So it's rendered the Electoral College basically impotent. So we've got free and fair elections. And as a result of free and fair elections, we've got a actually thriving democracy. And the Overton window is just going to continue to shift left and left. And so we'll see how far it goes. So just to recap here, uh, so Chucky Bucky is in a different timeline where uh, the Orange Man has defeated Joe Biden in 2020, is running again for his third term in 2024. Um, Uncle Chuck, in a different timeline from the two of us, his timeline separated in 2016 in time for Bernie to win the Democratic nomination to defeat Trump. And Bernie Sanders is now finishing his eight years as president. And the next president will be Barbara Lee of uh, California. So, um, well, good luck to all of us, especially, wow, especially Chucky Bucky. I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's pretty tough over here. I, I guess we haven't really talked too much about, I mean, how bad is it? Oh, it's bad. He's got, like I say, he's got the military. He's got the police. He's got the entire Justice Department. He's got most of the courts. Uh, nobody likes him, but it doesn't matter. It's the tyranny of the minority now that, that everybody always talked about. He, he, everybody hates him, but still he's in power and he's got just enough people who, you know, they do favors for each other and he's got the rich folks, you know, in line. He's got the billionaires 
Um, he's got for the last four years, he's had Elon Musk like in charge of things. He just he thinks up big projects about what to do, you know, how to make people work harder for less money and stuff. And he just puts Elon Musk in charge, you know. So it gets gets worse and worse, and people are poor and struggling, and they rely on each other for mutual aid. But then when the government catches them trying to like give away food, you know. So and uh, so Chucky Bucky, how's the um? How are you still doing this podcast? Because I would think that the crackdown on media would have... Yeah, how's that working out for you guys? Well, you're right. It's pretty much impossible. We had to go underground with um, Charles Purcell with the log, and then the three of us and others with uh, Charles Purcell Presents. Right, We did. We had to go underground, and um, we pretty much now just record on old cassettes, and then we make copies in these... Uh, there's a whole underground movement uh, it's it's vast. It's really pretty big. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, you know, we get raided and they catch us and then we got to set up operations in a different place. But, yeah, they've cracked down. They are um, they pretty much control the airways now. It's kind of like, you know, Fox News and One America News and um, News Max. Those are like the big three now. And uh, CNN and MSNBC, remember those guys? They're pretty much just out of business because um, the Orange Menace used the power of his government to just harass them and take them off the air and, and like take away their licenses and whatever, you know, that kind of, I'm not exactly sure how he did it. But so, yeah, guys like us with podcasts, uh, he's got his fingers all over the internet, you know, he's got control of that. So it's just, um, yeah, uh, we, we record uh, cassettes and then distribute them. There's a whole underground railroad of people sharing ideas and information uh, via uh, audio cassette, like the old days. Wow. So, so how, how is my uh, counterpart? How's, how's uh, Uncle Chuck in your timeline? Well, I, you know, I love you, Uncle Chuck, um, and it's good to hear your voice. Because uh, truth is, I haven't heard Uncle Chuck's voice, your voice, in quite a while now. It's been a few years. Well, what are you, what are you saying? Well, he died. Uncle Chuck is dead? I'm, I'm dead in your timeline? Yes, I, I didn't even want to say it out loud. I'm sorry. Holy hell. But uh, Chucky Bucky, I'm so sorry. Um, and Uncle Chuck, Jesus, that must, I'm not even around in your timeline? Holy gosh almighty. Um, well, gee, I, I hate to ask. How, what am I doing in your timeline, Chucky Bucky? Well, the truth is um, you're in jail, Charles Purcell. You know, there was no getting around. You had so many opinions, you know, that you recorded. You put right on there and out on the, to the Internet, out to the podcast. You know, you're, you're, there's no getting around it. You were just out there. There was no pulling it back. So you were easy to find for the authorities, and they shut you down pretty quick, and they found they found some excuse to put you in jail. So I, I'm, I'm literally in jail? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. What, what did they get me for? What did they charge? Oh, there's, you know, they just kind of rejiggered the laws about liable or, no, li, li, not liable, libel? Yeah, there's, there, there's libel, there's defamation, there's... there's right, uh, right. There's, I forget the other... Uh, so they got me on that? Yeah, there's no such thing really as free speech anymore. They, they they rigged all the rules. They can put anybody in jail they want. You know, like Putin put Navalny in jail and others and eventually killed him and So, I'm in jail. Yeah, you're up you're up north somewhere up in the north woods where they got all those prisons, you know, up in Wisconsin, some small town, I forget which one, Mosini or one of those places. Jesus. I I still I'll still write you letters occasionally, but the censors, you know, hardly, I don't really know how you're doing. And we can't share ideas or anything because the censors are so bad. So that's after just another four years of uh, the Orange Menace as president. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, knock wood, I'm, uh, I'm hanging in there and um, recording this cassette now as we speak. So, so yeah. And, um. Uncle Chuck, I mean, you're doing great in your timeline. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like I said now three times, I wish I could just pull you over, you two. How am I doing? Oh, Charles Purcell, you're doing, you're doing fine. Chucky Bucky, you're doing fine. We got a, we got a nice operation going. 
Uh, New Arts and Media Studios are flourishing, and the, the podcast is more successful than ever. And um, we're quite popular now because our our ideas, the kind of socialist and social anarchist ideas, are gaining in popularity. And uh, as we've always promised here when we were together, that we would be the uh, the loyal opposition to the Democrats, and that's what we've remained. We we've supported Bernie Sanders and his presidency. But we know that we can go further left, and so we've pushed him from that. But the thing is, we respect him and we like him. And the uh, general uh, political world that we live in, we all understand that uh, we love the country and we want, we want the world to do better. Uh, but the, the push is from the left, but we can have these political disagreements and still agree that we're all good people hoping for the best. And, and I, I should mention before we go, one of the big pushes from the left as I say, the, the Democrats or the Social Democrats, the Bernie Sanders of the world, they're pretty much the center of the uh, political spectrum, and they're kind of in line now with, America is in line with the Nordic countries, the, kind of the best of Europe in, in sort of the social democracy. But a great criticism that's emerging now from the left is one I know, Charles Purcell, that was really close to your heart, and that is that as good as that is, the, the fact is, and it's a harsh fact to acknowledge as good as things are going in the U.S. and in uh, Europe, we are still taking advantage of the global South, and there's not equity or equality at all. When you look at it globally and internationally, the income and wealth inequality is still quite stark, and uh, the uh, abuse of workers and the extraction of uh, resources and materials. Oh, right, yeah, we talk about that a lot, and the three of us when we were together before the timelines separated. Yeah, so that, that's gaining some traction. In your timeline? Oh, my goodness. It, yes, it is. It's, it's become a very popular movement to globalize social and economic justice. Oh, well, that's just, I'm so happy to hear that. Now, we're a long way from it. Okay, things aren't perfect. But it definitely has a voice now. Oh, gosh almighty. How about that? Well, good for you guys. All right. Well, I guess I got to get going. Uh, thanks, Cousin Chaz, our uh, audio engineer and amateur uh, theoretical physicist for putting this show together. Thanks, Uncle Chuck, and congratulations to you and all the good work you're doing in your timeline. Sure, well, happy to be here. And, uh, geez, wow, thanks, uh, Chucky Bucky, and our heart goes out to you, and we wish you the best of luck in your uh, sort of uh, dystopian timeline. Yeah, well, you know, we've got close-knit comrades, right? You know, we got people working together in the underground, and so we find ways to be happy, and we and the work is important, and so we're doing, don't worry too much about us, we're doing okay We'll, uh, you know, we're going to hang in there. Well, man, that's, uh, I don't know if I can have that same attitude. Good for you. I admire that, uh, Chucky Bucky. Um, there you go. Okay. Wow. All righty then. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys. Love you guys. Yep. Love you. Thanks, listeners. See ya. This episode of Charles Purcell Presents is available right now wherever you find your podcasts or go to the website charlespurcell.com for the full archive and all the other series in the podcast family. Follow me on Facebook. Write to me at charlespurcell at gmail. Thanks to our flagship terrestrial station, River West Radio, riverwestradio.com. Theme music composed and performed by Peter Donalds. From the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee, I'm Charles Purcell.